everybody, my name's Tim, and I'm here to show you my 2023 Ford F-350 single rear wheel, long bed, rapid red, Lariat Ultimate package. Uh, the Super Duty is new for 2023, it's been redesigned by Ford. Uh, it is loaded with tech and features. We're gonna take a look, here we go. First up, I'm gonna talk about why I ordered the truck with these options. Well, I'm coming from a 2010 F-150 tow package that I used to pull a 20-foot enclosed trailer with my Shelby GT500 uh, car that I go to the track often. I wanted something with a little bit more pulling power. The plan is to get a uh, gooseneck double car trailer, and that's what kind of drove me to the F-350. Uh, talking with some friends that have Super Duties and doing some research online, the Dually F-350 kind of has a rough ride. You've got twice the contact patch in the back, uh, hitting all the bumps in the road. So I went with the single rear wheel due to a better ride. Why I went with the long bed truck, long frame, uh, for a few reasons. The long frame moves the uh, bouncy axle farther aft for a better ride. Gives you more storage in the bed, obviously. I can put uh, you know extra set of wheels, tires for going to the track in there, a bunch of tools, extra stuff. It gives you the big fuel tank, 48 gallon fuel tank, amazing range. I think it shows 760 miles when it's full. Uh, rapid Red, why did I choose Rapid Red? My Shelby GT500 is Rapid Red. Uh, also right over there, the Weiss mach -E GT, also rapid red. Love the color, does amazing things out in the sun. So why the Lariat? Uh, I wanted a Job 1 truck earlier in the year versus later in the year, late availability. The King Ranch Platinum and Limited were all late availability, so I didn't want to wait for that. The dealership that I was going through had an allocation. They could get an, a Lariat, uh, but they could not get the other higher trim levels. I ordered this back in January. The Platinum and the Limited trim levels were not available. I could have gotten a King Ranch, but uh, didn't want the uh, Western motif. So Lariat, uh, went Lariat and uh, chose the Lariat Ultimate Package, which gives you a lot of the tech and features that the uh, higher trim levels have. I went with the Sport Appearance Package. Uh, the, I think there was a blacked out package that was a late availability. I wanted it earlier, like I said, so I went with the Sport Appearance Package versus the Chrome. Like the look, you see the dark features on this truck. And then the FX4 Off-Road Package got intel that if you order that, it moves up your truck into a Job 1 truck. They were kicking those out earlier, so I ordered that with the Off-Road Package with no intent to take this off-road. New for this year is a 6.7 high output engine. I did not see a need to go with the upgraded engine. This 6.7 power stroke has 1,050 foot-pounds of torque. It's gonna pull anything that I wanna pull, including the double gooseneck trailer. It's zero problems, uphills, mountainous, you name it, it's gonna pull it. So before I go inside and show you all the tech on the uh, dash and options, I'm gonna look at the outside. Uh, the grill's been redesigned, the light's been redesigned. Uh, this is an upgraded trim, so it's got all the LED and the LED surround. LED fogs, you got your tow hooks down there. That lower air dam there, I believe, can be removed for off-road. Mirrors have a bunch of lighting options. And uh, the mirrors, telescope, there's power telescoping. You've got the convex as well as the standard mirror. The standard mirror is adjustable electronically, and the, uh, the lower mirror here is uh, done by hand. Big side vents now for the 2023. Got the upgraded wheels and tires for the uh, Lariat Ultimate and Off-Road and they're part of the Sport Appearance Package. You got your locking hubs. Uh, the standard running boards not deployable. Those are part of the Sport Appearance Package. This is new this year. You got your steps. This is the bedside step. It does not flip up despite how it looks there. Get you up into access to the front side of your bed. The taillights have, uh, this is upgraded trim with the options here. I got the sensors in there for all sorts of fun. We'll show you on the dash. There's your rear uh, step, getting you up into the bed. Handhold here so you can secure yourself getting up into there. Uh, new for this year is the drop down steps. I did not get those because this has built in steps. Uh, the rear end's been redesigned. This is improved design from uh, the earlier models from my understanding. Going to take a look in the back end. The Lariat has a uh, powered down tailgate. Press this button twice, tailgate comes down. Very nice if you're backing up towards a uh, gooseneck trailer and you haven't put the, the back end down yet. Um, I have a spray and bed liner, but I had the dealer do this. Um, I was told that uh, having it done at the factory would delay the uh, truck. Also, same with the tunnel cover. This is a Ford tunnel cover, but done at the dealer. Post sale, or post delivery, I should say. But this thing is fantastic, much nicer. Much nicer than the one I had in my 2010. Uh, I ordered the Pro Onboard Power, two kilowatts. 
I will be using this truck at the track. Sometimes I don't have access to electricity, so it'd be nice to have uh, electricity for whatever I need. Over here, you have your plugs for trailers. This is LED lighting, which I will show all the lighting at night as well. And I've got the gooseneck option, which comes with a kit. I got that in the house, but that all gets installed there. These trucks come with a ruler along the backside. Pretty handy feature for those that need to measure stuff on, on a job site. Nice big drop down step. I believe it's lower for the 2023. Here's your handle. Easy to get in and out of your bed. The hitch is a 2.5 inch receiver. Uh, this has been redesigned from my understanding from the previous year, easier to uh, hook up your chains. I've got an adjustable hitch with uh, different size balls. You've got cameras all over this thing, sensors. There's a sliding rear glass, power slide. And it is time to go inside, fire up the truck, get some air conditioning going here in Texas and talk about all the features on the inside. It is loaded. Big digital displays, absolutely fantastic. Before I get into the electronics features and tech in this uh, truck, which is, uh, it's an extensive list. I'm gonna show kind of the physical layout. Uh, I upgraded the seats to the lie flat seats. Uh, absolutely fantastic option, uh, whether the wife's taking a nap, I'm taking a nap uh, at the track. Um, nice to be able to lay flat. The seats are real comfortable. The rear seat area has a ton of room. You've got a pull tab to uh, unlock the seats. So they fold down, they lock in the up position. Armrest here for the uh, center seat right there. It converts uh, down to an armrest and cup holders. Seats fold up. There, this is new for 2023, I believe. There is a locking uh, area here for underneath the seats so when you put your seats down that's a locked area underneath the seats all these uh, lock into position here there's a release on the inside to uh, fold it down the jack handle and tool kit is underneath the uh, rear seat on the driver's side and behind the passenger seat uh, back seat here is the jack the pro power here takes up some space underneath the seat You've got a host of uh, power plugs in the back here, 12 volt, 120. There's another plug right there, seat heat in the back. There is the lock there. It's on uh, both seats, both sides to lock the seats down to secure that under seat storage area. Lots of legroom up front, good commanding view out the window. Pretty good size uh, center console. Uh, you've got this door here that you can open, leave open. You push it up to uh, close again. Inside here, we've got a wireless charger on the side. Uh, you don't have to connect uh, your phone to uh, use Apple CarPlay or um, Android uh, Play, whatever that's called as well. I've got Apple stuff. A couple of charging ports here, USB, USB-C. Uh, this slot here is for uh, tablets or phones, extra phones, and there's uh, slots to run your cables up to the bottom. Boom back, we have cup holders. New for 2023, I believe, is the sliding cup holder. You can turn two cup holders into four cup holders. Pretty cool. Center console, big, lots of room, lots of storage area. There is a lot of storage area in this uh, truck. Both sides of the center console, whole center console area. Door's got a bin here. It's got a big bin across the bottom down here. Lots of room to put stuff. Moving up here to uh, the dash, we've got some more power ports. That indicates it's hot. 120 there, 12 volt here. Uh, we've got the big glove box, but then also we've got another glove box above it, the upper storage. Press the button, this opens up. Lots more room in there. If you can see, it's kind of dark in there. Super duty badging right there. Um, coming across over here to the other side, we've got the door controls, standard window stuff, uh, mirror adjustments. These mirrors are already sticking out pretty far. You can power fold these things, hit this button, your mirrors fold, which allows me to get this big ass truck into my carport, very helpful. Unfold them and then power telescoping. Uh, you hit this button here, they slide out see right there and then you can retract them in get your mirrors out wider for the trailer towing very helpful coming across here this is lighting uh, zone lighting off the left side right side which I'll show at night uh, that is your 
Pro onboard power. So let's see, if we come over on the dash here, I can uh, hit this. We'll get a little bit into the tech here. Onboard power, which I'll be covering more here in a bit. Cycling this button over here. Uh, let's see, that's the power. We'll show you your different power options. So I hit it once. It's in generator mode now. It gives you a warning. So you've got the full two kilowatts. And I'll hit it one more time over here to cycle it all off. And the light and the port is out, indicating that the plugs are turned off. All right, back over on the side panel here, uh, we have another way to drop the tailgate uh, right here. Two times that drops the tailgate down. This is your bed lighting. This is your headlights. I'm in auto right now. Fog lights, uh, LED fog lights uh, are in the middle. Push button right there. Uh, your instrument cluster lights brighter or dimmer. Down below here, we have an electric uh, parking brake. Pull to set. Brake light up on the dash, parking brake on. And this uh, moves your pedals forward and back and they are locked in by your memory settings right there. Side of the steering wheel, right here. And is power adjustment steering wheel. So we can go up, down, telescoping and retract it towards the dash. Right side of the steering wheel, start stop button, pro trailer assist, as well as uh, backup. So I use this pro hitch assist, I believe it's called. The truck will automatically back up to the hitch and stop. It's an amazing thing. I used it one time and I was blown away by it. Absolutely phenomenal. Your standard trailer brake controller, drive modes, which we'll be covering with the tech. Cross here, we have your standard climate control. This is how you adjust the fan. Uh, cooled seats, heated seats, heated steering wheel, all your defrost, and then dual zones, hit the button, turn on a separate side for the uh, your passenger. We've got these buttons across the top. This is an engine brake uh, right there. Let's see if I hit the button. It says engine brake on. Hit it again. Automatic engine brake on. Many, many cameras. I'll be getting into that uh, as we talk about the tech. Uh, this is your parking assist uh, alarm or alert silence. So if you're backing up and you know something's there and it's hollering at you, you can uh, silence it there. Your hazards, traction control, stability control, you know, the whole advanced track system off. And then over here is a hill descent assist. And that's for basically off-road stuff. Press the button. Hill descent control ready, okay. Overhead console, you've got the upfitter aux switches. So these are uh, switches already pre-wired. You can hook up accessories to those, control them. Fuses are in the uh, uh, engine compartment if I understand them correctly. But uh, turn on different options. Right here is power slider. Rear window, power slider. Right there in the mirror. And then your other switches here are for the massive moonroof above our head here. So I'll press this switch here. I'm holding the switch. It stops there for just the front passengers. Hit it again, it goes all the way back to open up for the rear. Huge glass roof. And then the other button, which is right here, Opening the glass. Huge. Also up here are speakers, speakers and microphones. Uh, this has the 18 speaker B&O system. Sounds really badass for a truck. Of course, I can't crank it up because uh, it's not YouTube friendly, but uh, it sounds awesome. All right, coming down, got my foot on the brake, put the transmission in drive. You'll see we've got 10-speed transmission. This thing is fantastic. On the gear shift lever, we've got a plus and minus. Um, you can use that to subtract or add back gears. So hitting this minus key right here, uh, if you see it says one, two, all the way up to 10, I'll hit it once, there goes 10, hit it again, there goes nine, hit it again, there goes eight. You're, you're removing gears from the automatic shifting. So if you've got a heavy load going in the mounds and you don't want it shifting all the way up and you want to keep a higher RPM, that's how you subtract gears. And then you add them back by hitting the plus sign. 
There's seven, we put eight back, nine back, and all 10. On the side is your manual button, and you can lock in manual shifting. And then your plus and minuses are different, that's for selecting your gears. Moving down below the gear shift lever, we have this panel here. This is for drive modes. It says 2H right now. This has multi-functions. You can rotate this dial. You can also press these buttons around the outside. So I'm gonna rotate the dial. Right now, you'll see we're in normal mode. Rotate it one more time, and, and the the modes are listed on the bottom in order there, so normal. So it's uh, far left is eco, then it shows trailer. So I keep hitting the, uh, the button here to reset the timer. Normal, rotate it once to the right, slippery mode, and you'll see that our shifting went into 4H automatically. Rotate it again, just brings it up. Slippery mode, rotate it one more time, we're off-road, still 4H. But if we look down here, the locking differential, lower left, automatically engaged. Screen changed. And uh, by the way, this uh, screen over here shows you out front with your path. So if you're crawling over rocks on a skinny trail, whatever, it's gonna show you right out front what's underneath the nose. Okay, rotate it again, off-road. We're now rotating back left through the uh, different modes. And we're in tow hull. This stayed in 4H because I was in off-road. It says 4x4 shift in progress. We're back in 2H uh, tow mode. Rotating left one more time. We're over in eco. So saving on the diesel fuel. If you look down here, speaking of diesel fuel, uh, like I said, the dealer filled this 48 gallon tank up before I bought it. Uh, I have yet to put any more fuel in this thing. It has gone just shy of 600 miles, and my miles till empty, 120. That is absolutely insane. Um, to the left of your fuel gauge is the DEF gauge, uh, a little less than three quarters. I've got these, uh, these center two gauges here are user selectable, so I have DEF on the right, uh, turbo boost on the left, and then temperature, which I have uh, the detailed actual number in there as well. That's your engine coolant temperature. I'm back in normal drive mode, and uh, looking at this panel back down here, um, you don't have to rotate this knob to get into 4H. Uh, you can just hit the button, so I'll hit 4H, 4 four high right here. Look at the dash when I do it. There's this 4x4 four four shift in progress. In order to select 4 low, we have to be in neutral. So I'll put the transmission over in neutral, and select 4 low. Four by four shift in progress and advanced track off and four low. And it puts us back in the uh, basically off-road camera out front. This button down here is uh, locking rear diff. It's an upgraded option I, I got. Uh, when you hit that button, nothing shows up on the dash. You just get the light down low here and uh, rear diff is locked and you can just deselect that. I can go from four L or four low to four high or 2H, uh, too high. So I'll just select uh, too high. I'm still in neutral, four by four shift in progress. So on to the steering wheel buttons. Left side is uh, your drive and volume and speak. So this is uh, cruise control. This truck has adaptive cr cruise control, which basically drives itself. It does drive itself. Uh, my wife's Mach-E GT has what's called Blue Cruise. That is true hands-free driving. This truck uh, basically does the same thing, but it, it makes you keep your hands on the steering wheel. A little enunciator will uh, pop up and say, you know, put your hands on the wheels, but it steers round corners, stops. Um, it's, it's pretty amazing. So left side, cruise control, and you can turn on just kind of a traditional cruise control done through the options on your screen here, or the full up adaptive cruise. Speed up, slow down. This button here is when you're in cruise control, has four different options. We'll show it when I'm driving for how close you are to the vehicle ahead. And this turns your lane assist on and off. Um, you can just hit that button and it says lane keeping system off. Hit it again, lane keeping system on. Volume up and down. This button down here has uh, two functions. Press it once and the truck is uh, listening for voice prompts. Press and hold it and uh, it'll go to your phone. In my case, Siri with the iPhone. Um, so when I press this once, the prompt will uh, pop up, the screen will change here, and it'll be listening for my voice commands. So I'll press it. 
Tune 92.5. Tuning to FM 92.5. Moving over to the right side is your uh, menu navigation as well as uh, you know station presets back and forth and your phone hang up button. Uh, but menus gets us into uh, the center display here, which is a big old beautiful digital display. So I hit the menu button one time, menu pops up. I like my view, but there are a host of different options you can have in here. Um, so my view just takes you to the screen that you prefer, and this will show me my lane keeping as well as the vehicle in front when I'm out driving around. Uh, hit the menu button again. It's going down to trip fuel, you can get into there. Trip one, trip two, fuel economy, we can take a look at that. Um, and. You can also get your fuel economy over on this screen over here. Uh, this is basically a double screen, which we'll talk about in a second, but I can have fuel economy on the right. I can have my Waze uh, iPhone navigation on the left, and then I can have different screens over here up front. Uh, heads up display, good time to talk about it, but I'm gonna have to show you more of it when I'm out driving around. So the HUD heads up display, an awesome addition for the 2023. Uh, right now, there's not much data on there because I'm not all driving, but um, it's going to have all your HUD information up on the glass. Uh, you can adjust that HUD up, down, rotate it left, right. Um, I've got it kind of set for my seating position. It'll show me lane uh, definitions left and right, as well as distance to the cars ahead. It reads, uh, the cameras on this truck read um, speed limits signs and we'll post the speed limits uh, on your uh, dash up on the HUD there as well. Gauges are how you set up uh, what you're seeing, detailed information, you can change. And if you look on the right side there, over here, you'll see that there are multiple screens to cycle through. There's the first, there's two, three, four and five. So each one of your menus that you go into are gonna have different options. So I can go into diesel measurements right there. I can go into all these individual ones to select them specifically, I could just cycle through from the general. All right, hitting the back button here, gets us back out of gauges, toggling down. There's off-road options, off-road status, and this stuff is available on the center screen as well. And if you look on the right, there's two, uh, which just disappeared, but there are two gauges to cycle through, pitch and roll, and that's back to the original. Back button, back button, towing. Towing in this thing is a game changer. Holy crap, I've done it one time. Absolutely amazing. The power is ridiculous. The technology is ridiculous. It's just a game changer. So you can, store trailer information um so i have and that'll be on the center screen when i go in there but uh, i have my 20 foot enclosed trailer programmed in there it will figure out fuel economy for individual trailers so once i have a double gooseneck which is gonna be a lot heavier you know a lot more wind resistance i'll get worse fuel economy with that it'll know the trailers when i hook up to them and adjust my miles remaining um, on my gauge uh you know fuel remaining uh, based on the trailer that I'm pulling. And we'll also, the navigation will reroute you based on uh, height restrictions, uh, turning radius restrictions. Um, so it's a very smart truck when you get into uh, towing. Uh, trailer light status, you can have, well it says no trailer detected, but you can have a trailer light test done. You can do that through the Ford Pass app as well while you're standing out there looking at your trailer, making sure all the lights are uh, working. Trailer tire information, you can program information in there. You can also have your TPMS uh, sensors uh, read by the truck. Towing status gives you your uh, trailer brake gain, which I have 6.5 right now. That works well when my uh, Shelby is in the uh, trailer. And you can adjust your gain down here with the trailer brake controller. All right, hitting back, out of towing. Seat belts, engine information. This is gonna tell you how long your engine is idled. Okay. Vehicle maintenance, tire pressures, high tire pressures with the F350 single rear wheel, oil life, def, your diesel emissions fluid, tells your range, your exhaust uh, filter, 
And engineer filter, all good. Settings. Configure gauges. This is how you show which gauges are in your center two. You can pick what's in the you know center left and pick what's in the center right. The outside ones are set. All right, one other nice uh, thing to show here is uh, calm view. So when you're in my view, uh, you hit the menu button, you're in my view right there. If you look, you got these uh, on the right, shows you how many different screens there are. So you can toggle down through these screens. Here's calm view, basically the dash, uh, good for maybe driving at night. The dash goes pretty dark with just a couple of pieces of information on there. Cycling down through different screen options. There's trip one, fuel economy, tire pressures, all your numbers. And then this is how you configure my view, press and hold to add or remove screens. So on to this big, beautiful center display. Uh, it's really two different displays. Um, on the right side, this kind of third of the screen, if you will, you can toggle up and down to cycle through different options. Again, you have the uh, bars on the right to show you how many different options you have. That's the pro onboard power, showing that it's not being used right now. You can toggle individually through these, or you can hit uh, this button on the right and then basically scroll. All sorts of options available on the right side there. Bed camera, if I want to just have that and run my bed camera, I can turn that on and they're showing out back on the bed. Cameras, uh, as long as I'm talking cameras, might as well hit them. So this button up here gets into all your different camera options. This is out front, that's 360. I can zoom in, really helpful when you're getting into a tight area for parking. I can zoom in right here, zoom, and it's showing me real tight there that I am on uh, lined up on my yard here. Hit the minus, go back out to the 360 view. Any camera I want to zoom in and see shows me that area. This screen here, the main screen, I can get into multiple different cameras. That's showing the big bed camera. That's from the back of the cab looking into the bed. This is out front. That's the 360 camera that we we're looking at. This shows three different panels out front. Good crisp view. Um, this is out back. Full view, not available. This is my hitch. Looking down at the trailer hitch. Uh, helpful if you're manually backing this up to a trailer, but this thing does itself. Uh, and I'll show you that here in a bit. That is absolutely amazing tech. Love this screen here. And when you're pulling a trailer, this screen pops up automatically whenever you put the blinkers on and you're gonna turn. And this, this shines all the way down, showing your trailer, especially when you're turning, make sure you don't clip your trailer on any curbs. Nice uh, view there. And then this is how you would add a camera here, like if you're gonna put a camera on the back of a trailer. Across the bottom, we have our different uh, main menus. Uh, this is audio. We can go into different sources, listen to um, AM, FM, satellite, uh, your phone. CarPlay gets into uh, you know streaming from your phone and then you don't have to have your phone connected. This is Sync 4, which is fantastic. My Shelby G500, I have to have my phone connected via cable. Uh, my wife's uh, Maki has uh, the same setup where it streams uh, wirelessly. And you can charge your phone down here, not connected by wires, and have uh, your car play up and fantastic. There's the uh, trucks nav. Towing gets into a host of menus. Uh, connection checklist at, this is where I added my trailer. I have no trailers connected right now. Manage trailers, you can get into your trailer uh, maintenance. Um, trailer light check, you can turn this on. You can also do it through the Ford Pass app. Walk around your trailer, make sure all the lights are on. Uh, trailer connection notif notification, so it'll alert. I think the truck horn honks. It also sends you a, a message to your Ford Pass app if somebody disconnects your trailer. Trailer sway control, and uh, some more, you know, your maintenance reminders for your trailer. Uh, settings for your vehicle. This is some of the important stuff here. 30 minute max idle before it shuts itself off. Um, you can 
change that or that does change when you're in generator mode. You basically run it uh, until it's out of fuel. Uh, key detect detection alert. So no, I've got that turned off. Rear occupant alert. I think that does it once a year. You gotta, you know, I disabled that. Easy entry exit. That moves your seat and your steering wheel to get in and out. Display. We can turn the display off here. We can also turn it off. Let's see. There's and this button here. There's actually a physical button right here. We can hit that button once. It goes to that. Hit it again. Display goes off. Hit the button again. Display comes back on. All right. Features. Lots of options in here. Driver assistance. Cruise control, I have it set to adaptive cruise control, but you can turn that stuff off. You can do normal cruise. You can turn off lane centering. So uh, I'll show you when I take this thing out to drive, but uh, it's a little weird to get used to, I'll say this. Um, my wife's mach -E, when you drift in a lane or get close to a lane line, it'll vibrate the steering wheel. This truck will actually steer you back towards lane centering. Um, even when your cruise control's off, and you can turn that off. I'm still not 100% sure if I like it. Most of the time it does a great job, and if you're distracted or tired and you're wandering a little bit in the lane, it's uh, helpful in those cases. Every once in a while it sees a different line that isn't quite, whether it's a you know, a pavement line and not a painted line, um, it'll do a little steering on you. It's not real abrupt, easy to override, but uh, a couple times they're uh, like out in some country bumpkin roads where the lines aren't really well defined, it can be a little surprising. Pre-collision assist. Um, so the truck will automatically brake uh, if it detects uh, you know, an object. And then also um, when you're driving, if something is out on the road, let's say a deer runs out, a kid, a bike, a, you know, whatever, some, or something's in the road, if you do nothing, it's going to drive straight ahead and hit it. But as soon as you decide I want to go left or you know, left or right, the truck starts helping you with steering and braking around the object and then getting back, you know, to the lane afterwards. Pro power on board. This is how you get in there and uh, see what you're, you're uh, using. You can turn it on here. You can turn on that switch I showed you down the side. Zone lighting, something I'll show you at night. Pretty cool. You can turn on lights all the way around the outside of the truck. All right, show what these uh, buttons do. It's kind of hard to see my hands in the dark here, but uh, these little uh, zone light uh, mirror buttons here. So hit that, lights up the outside, nice and bright outside the left side of the vehicle. If I get the camera to focus, there we go. And I'll turn that one off. Turn on the other side over here. I got uh, neighbor's fold light reflected in the mirror there, but uh, there's the zone light there. There's a focus. Nice bright lights out the side of the mirror. That's just the individual hard buttons there. I can come here on the uh, big center screen and uh, this is the zone lighting screen. Hit the power button. I can turn on individual sides like I just got done doing with the switches. Uh, left side of the steering wheel, I hit all zones and it just lights up everything around the truck. Zone lighting from the outside. Bright lights all the way around the truck. And you can only do that with the headlight switched to off, not auto. So the zone lighting takes control of the headlights. You got the reverse lights on, the bed, bed light. Back inside the truck now, zone lighting. I'll turn off all with the one with the uh, power button right there. I'll just hit the all off. All goes dark outside. Pulling into my tighter carport here, I've got the mirrors folded in. Maybe kind of hard to see in the dark out there. Um, but with the headlights on, the zone lighting controls on the center screen do not work, but you still have access to these uh, and you can't see what I'm pointing at in the dark down here, but these two uh, hard switches down to the left of the steering wheel, I can turn on the left uh, mirror zone lighting right there, and as well as the right right there, shine uh, 
going into the uh, carport. I'm gonna show the bed lights at night. So I've got the key fob on me. As I walk towards the truck, it'll sense that. The lights will come on. We've got the bed light up there, the tail lights, the uh, light on the back of the um, tailgate, the mirror lights. I'm gonna wait for these to time out and then I will turn on these uh, bed lights which are on the side right there. All right, the bed lights timed out. I'll turn on the switch here on the side of the box. Nice, bright lights, lighting up the box at night. Also, while I got the lights on here at night, I installed these uh, rear tie downs that came with the truck. Right there, they have a key that locks them in place. There's two for the front that I haven't installed yet as well. All right, so that's basically the layout and the features of this truck. It's time to take this sucker for a drive and show you some of the stuff in action. Here we go. Here we go, put the sucker in drive. I've got uh, my music on the left side of the screen, right side's fuel economy, in front of me is my view. And there is the hood. So you can see on the dash there, it has blue in front of me. That's showing that it sees no, oh, and here we got some deer running across the road. Perfect. <laughs> awesome. Okay, good timing. <laughs> All right, so just went by a speed limit sign. As you saw there, the speed limit popped up on the hood. Pretty cool. And it was filled in when it was new. Now it's uh, been up for a little bit. It just kind of goes to a hollow speed limit. All right, still is not seeing the lanes. This is uh, an old worn kind of country road here. So it's it might start seeing the lanes. Oh, right there. You'll see the lane uh, edges just popped up. So now I could turn on cruise control here and it is now driving itself my hand is on the steering wheel and on the dash you see the blue along each side of the truck that shows that it's defining the lane and i am not driving it it is driving itself let's see if it makes this turn okay i am not steering it is doing the steering for me which is pretty crazy I've now gone 600 miles with this truck. 118 miles till empty. Have not filled it up. Still full from the dealer. So with adaptive cruise on, uh, pretty, pretty obvious what it's doing. It's just uh, working on following the roads. I have cruise control off now, adaptive cruise. I'm manually driving the truck. And I'm gonna show you some of the automatic. So right there, it's showing yellow. I'm getting close to the uh, line that it sees out in front of the truck, lane lines. And as I get closer to this vehicle ahead of me, you see it says it has a blue. There was a little steering wheel input it gave me. It's showing blue for the distance ahead. The dash shows a car ahead, but distance is good. As I tighten up this distance, it'll start uh, changing colors on me. Right there, the HUD has gone to uh, yellow amber. It's showing amber in front here. And as I back up and create space, goes back to blue, HUD goes to blue. Steering wheel is doing inputs by itself as I get near a lane edge. Uh, it's real, you know, minor. It's it's not like it's going to fight you. You can override it easily, um, but it does steer by itself when uh, when you have that option turned on in the uh, you know vehicle settings, even when the cruise control is not on. Coming up on a 45 mile an hour speed limit sign there. You'll see the camera read it. Put it on the HUD. Pretty cool feature. So I'm on a country bumpkin uh, road here that's uh, not overly smooth. The F-350 single rear wheel um, long bed rides better than uh, you'd expect. You know, that's a stiff set of springs back there to hold the weight. So you got uh, two less tires uh, hit the road, bounce around little road imperfections. And then you've got that, uh, you know, the springs are farther back, the axle are farther back behind you, making that pivot about you, uh, you know, less, less rough. 
Um, so it rides better than you'd expect. Going down a very uh, bright, uh, reflective country bumpkin road. Can't really see the lane lines very well, but uh, they just popped up in the hood. So I'm gonna purposefully steer over center and see, I'll show you what happens here. Steering wheel is taken over by itself. If you see it's steering by itself, and it tells me to keep the hands on the steering wheel. So there it's seeing the left lane. I'll steer over and let go of the steering wheel, and it steers over all by itself. Now I'm gonna drift towards the edge of the road, and there it just steers all, all back by itself. These uh, dual mirrors are fantastic for visibility. That one's power adjustable, like I said earlier. That one is a convex wide angle. All right, I talked about subtracting gears using the uh, minus button over here on the column. So right now I'm in ninth gear, or the transmission's in ninth gear. I'm at uh, 46 miles per hour. I'll start subtracting gears. There, now it won't go past fifth gear, and I can add those gears back in with the plus. All right, I'm gonna go show you some towing magic. I'm gonna hook this sucker up to my 20 foot uh, and close. I'm not gonna have my car and it's gonna be empty, so it's, uh, you know, maybe only 3,500 pounds, which is absolutely nothing for this beast of a truck. But uh, backing up to the trailer, amazing tech. Uh, towing the trailer around with the cameras, uh, fantastic. So we're gonna go take a look at that now. Time to show the magic of the Pro Trailer Hitch Assist. Uh, this guy here, you can use that to back up a trailer. Uh, in my case right now, I'm gonna use this to connect or back up to my 20 foot enclosed. I've got that back behind the truck there. Um, if you're gonna back up manually, you got a big old screen, you got cameras all over, camera that aims right down on the hitch, makes that very easy but this truck has some special tech in it. So I'm gonna put a tranny in reverse. I'm gonna press the pro trailer hitch button one time. It asked me, is, is the trailer connected? No, it is not. Now it says it's initializing. Now it wants me to move the truck manually to get the hitch in that center area there. So I'm gonna move. I'm gonna put it right in the middle right there. Tells me to stop. Now, I've let go of the steering wheel. I'm gonna use my right hand on the camera, left hand on the uh, Pro Trailer button here. I'm gonna press and hold this and take my foot off the brake. Truck is now driving itself. Steering inputs are all automatic. Gas brake is automatic. It is backing up. Just set the parking brake and it's asking me a question. Making sure that my trailer is uh, set to the appropriate height for the hitch. I'm gonna say it's appropriate. And I'm gonna resume pressing the button. Brake disengages. Steering input still happening. And it is backing up. It's uh, crawling very slowly right now. Steering input still happening. Just set the parking brake. There we go, let's go take a look. Backed up right underneath the hitch. That is freaking amazing. <laughs> uh, very cool tech. All right, back in the truck. Once I get the trailer connected to the uh, truck, I see some new information on the dash. It says set uh, 20 and close as your active trailer. I'm gonna hit OK. Cross tra traffic alert deactivated, trailer attached. OK on the steering wheel. And we're gonna tow with this sucker. I can extend out my mirrors to uh, get that wider view. So get my trailer out of a tight view here. 
I dig this view. This is down both sides of the trailer, both sides of the truck. I gotta get it out of my uh, lot here. There's a lot of obstacles. There's in the mirror. See the trailers avoiding the obstacles. can see down on the display down there we are in tow mode and with that you have a different HUD all right so when I put the blinker on the screen automatically changes which is totally awesome so as you're swinging you know in that direction swinging wide it's showing you that your trailer's clearing everything in the turn. As the blinker comes off, the screen resets. Love that feature. So notice my miles till empty change because it's computing tow in the trailer. It was showing over 100, uh, now it's showing 63. All right, towing my 20 foot enclosed, I've got my uh, 4,100 pound Shelby in there, so I've got about 8,000 pounds or so right behind me. Truck is uh, doing an amazing job. You see I'm in 10th gear there. There's so many gears. It'll downshift a little bit, maybe 9th day sometimes um, when I'm maybe accelerating up hills, but you don't even feel the uh, tranny shift. You don't even hear the change. It's just so effortless. Got the uh, tow HUD up because I'm in tow mode says uh, D10, that's drive, 10th uh, tenth, tenth gear on the left, lanes on the left and right, speed limit 75, doing 74 right now, and I've got uh, my distance uh, markers there, so it shows blue up to the cars ahead, I've got them on the farthest range, four bars, we set that on the dash, but uh, just an amazing easy tow experience. I've got uh, my charge port use there, or my plug-in, charging a light, which, oh, actually just turned green. Been charging while I'm driving. Um, <clears throat> also worth noting, I've done this trip quite a few times with my 2010 uh, F-150 pulling the same trailer. 36 gallon tank, I'd have to fill it up before I left the house and fill it up again, maybe two thirds of the way down from uh, Dallas-Fort Worth area to Texas down to Austin. Um, this is going to make it no problem on one tank load, which is nice. No need to stop. It'll shift. Probably going up this uh, steeper hill. There's a downshift. Don't even feel it. Don't even hear it. Just smooth as silk. One feature I didn't show before is uh, this little side screen, this third over here. If you swipe it, it goes into the full screen, into that option. That's kind of a neat little feature there. Driving at night, HUD is awesome. Got the screen on Waze there. Digital display. Oh, and I'm towing the trailer. Got my 20 foot with the uh, car in the back, about 8,000 pounds. If I put on my right blinker to slide over, there's the view at night of my trailer back there. I've got uh, the distance set up on the third uh, mark. You can hit uh, this button here, change the distance. There's three, there's two, there's one, there's four, max range. I've got it set for the third and it was keeping pace now they're speeding up so I can uh, speed up here I'll give it a few more clicks cruise oh, this person's cutting me off right here so the truck's gonna slow down get some spacing to get off of them and uh, oh by the way the uh, the lane keeping doesn't work when you have a uh, trailer connected in tow mode um, it will do lane assist, like if I come up against a uh, lane boundary, 
Um, let's see, I'll come up against the left side here. There's no cars over there. It'll still input steering and give you the little uh, amber alert there, but it's not gonna drive down the road maintaining the lane. It's just gonna keep you from crossing over. Um, that's just when you have the trailer connected. There is 1,000 miles. That's the break-in before you uh, tow per the owner's manual. Yeah, there's my trailer back there. <laughs> it's not that heavy of a load. Not for this beast. What a game changer this truck is over my 2010 F-150. Um, just makes it easy. The pulling power is incredible. I mean, using cruise control, which I could never do with my F-150 because it would downshift all crazy like on uh, oh yeah there's my blinker there's the view alongside the trailer lovely can never use the cruise control because we just downshift all crazy on every little hill this one and the hud you can see uh d10 i'm in 10th gear and drive and it just pulls up and down the hills it'll downshift once in a while you don't even feel it can't even hear it um but just power i mean Got cruise control on. I'm gonna talk a bit about the uh, lane keeping. Um, so when you're in tow mode with, with the trailer behind you, which I got back there, um, it's not gonna steer going down the road for you. It's just gonna set you know, speed. The adaptive or intelligent cruise, I think it's called. Oh, and it just read the speed limit. And just slowed me down five over the speed limit. Um, it's not going to uh, drive you down the road, hand, you know, hands-free, so to speak, even though this isn't hands-free like Blue Cruise. Um, but it does give you steering inputs if you drift in your lane. So like if I start drifting to the right here, you'll see, yeah, there's, and the steering wheel is actually steering back to the left by itself. It's just gonna do kind of, uh, you know, gutter ball bumpers, so to speak. Um, it's not gonna maintain the center of the lane steering down the road. Um, you know, I'm still getting used to that. Uh, I I still have those options engaged. You can turn those off. Oh uh, yeah, and I got my ways going. Um, I think I like it. There's some times where I, I don't care for it too much. Uh, like if I'm going alongside a big semi or, you know, big bus or something, I want to favor the, you know, side of the lane or just, you know, if I'm here and I'm, I'm, I'm going past a big unit on the uh, left side there, I may move over in favor of the right side of the lane or even go over the lane boundary a little bit. Like if I do this, you know, and it'll start pushing me back towards the big, big rig. Um, and you can overcome that with a steering wheel, but uh, sometimes I like to run a little wide on the bigger stuff, you know, cause you also have the, the air, you know, pushing off those big vehicles on you. Um, but yeah, it's nice to have, uh, so like as this car pulls in front of me, um, the truck will possibly slow down. Oh, it's doing all right because that car was going away from me at a good clip. But if they pull right in front of you and park there, um, the truck will slow down and set pace off of there. And actually it's doing 73. Yeah, it slowed down a little bit um, with the vehicle right in front of me. It'll speed back up. I mean, it's it's got some pros and cons, good features uh, as far as, you know, staying in your lane, if you're reaching to the back seat for something, you wander a little bit, it'll help you. That's helpful. Um, it's just some of the inputs, especially when you got the trailer there and you're trying to avoid uh, the big rigs, um, you know, it, it kind of gets your attention a little bit. First Phillip for me, there was still 100 miles till empty. So over 600 miles uh, have been traveled to include towing, $124, 38 gallons. Just did the first Phillip. 760 miles till empty again. 618 miles I've traveled. So stop for uh, fuel. Um, this is the second full tank. I picked it up new, the dealer filled it up. Um, burned through that tank, put in another tank. Uh, I've got 45 miles till empty. You can see I'm in tow mode because I've got my trailer connected. And that's the DEF, uh, diesel exhaust fluid. Um, I've been getting warnings uh, once it goes below half a tank, and I think the tank is 7.5 gallons if I remember correctly. Once it goes below half a tank, it was 4.99 miles till empty, starts giving me warnings. Just gave me another one at 4.19 miles to go. Um, and then it starts uh, reducing speed and then makes the vehicle inoperative if you run out. So I'm gonna fill it up with DEF for the first time and put uh, the third tank of diesel in there. At a truck stop, diesel, DEF, 
And there's the uh, def there. Let's take a look at the truck. Diesel left, def right. Just filled up with def uh, for the first time, as well as diesel for, uh, this is tank number three, pulling. Uh, I got my trailer connected so you can see the uh, miles to go till empty, as well as a little trailer icon underneath that, and full def. Driving at night, got the adaptive cruise control on. You can see the HUD out there. It's got the lane markers. Adaptive crew set to five over the speed limit. Lighting's nice and bright. Dash looks great. Got ways up there. And the uh, right third of the screen there, I've got uh, the audio. Nice setup. Well, that's it. That's a good look at the F-350 single rear wheel long bed super crew 4x4 Lariat Ultimate Package onboard Pro Power. Sport appearance package, lie flat seats, absolutely amazing truck. I'm coming from a 2010 F-150 that I pulled this trailer with. You know, it did a good job until it got into the hills and it really struggled. Um, some things really worth mentioning as far as the power. I could never use cruise control with this trailer with my uh, car in the back. The truck would be downshifting crazily. Uh, now this thing just cruise control up and down the hills all day long, no, no effort whatsoever. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed this detailed look. The truck's amazing. Uh, the tech added for uh, 2023, absolutely phenomenal. Go get yourself one. Thanks for watching. See you next time.